question that I've had over the years, is it possible to read the Bible too much? And of course, the uh, very righteous out there would say, it's not possible to read it too much. There's no such thing as reading the Bible too much. It's, you can you know, read it as much as you want, and it'll never, you know, reading too much won't mess you up or anything. Let's see what the scriptures have to say. Acts chapter 8. I dealt with this heretic years ago. I'll just say this little story to kind of preface this whole thing. Uh, Martin Richling was his name. You can see some of my old videos, you know, way back when we first came to Maine, almost 10 years ago now. Um, <clears throat> in January, it will be 10 years that we've been in Maine. And uh, this crazy nut, I'm trying to move, trying to get things done. And this guy, um, you know, Jesuit trained and the whole thing. I mean, the guy was a wing nut. A hyper dispensationalist um, didn't believe that Jesus Christ is God he was a created being and all this other stuff and the guy was just nasty I mean I said if you can survive the first 10 seconds of the video you're doing good I mean this guy was so bad over the top arrogant and everything else and um, one of the things he would say you know I read the Bible through you know eight hours a day I'm studying the Bible and I'm reading the Bible and all these other things and I made the point back then that this guy, he might be telling the truth that he reads the Bible that much, but if the Holy Spirit's not there and the fellowship of the Spirit with his brethren is not there, um, reading the Bible that much isn't going to do you any good. And there's a lot of people in this world, brethren, that read the Bible a lot more than you and a lot more than me, and yet they're just as lost as lost could be. I'm going to show you proof of that in today's sermon. Acts chapter 8, here we have Philip with the Ethiopian eunuch. We'll start in verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? I'm sorry, I went to 36. I meant 26. Sorry, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of, Eth of Ethiopia, an eunuch, of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. He's reading the scriptures, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Hmm. You can read and not understand. Okay? <laughs> um, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The Bible talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If you spend time reading this book and you're not saved, you'll never understand this book. And you can spend all the time in the world going through and, and doing your little prideful thing of, I've been through the Bible so many times and whatever else doesn't mean anything. And you can read all the great Christian authors and everything else and get an idea of how to interpret this book. But if the Holy Spirit's not there, it doesn't work. Let's continue. Verse 31. Um, and he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. This man's a lost man, and he's saying, I can't understand this. I'm not understanding it. You'll see here what he means. Um, I need somebody that's saved to tell me what this book means. Verse 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speakest, speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then opened Philip, or then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Okay? The eunuch read, didn't he? Did he understand it? No. Unless you are saved, unless you are born again, this book is not going to make sense to you. I get this thing from these atheists all the time. I got to thinking about that. Let me just, a little sideline thing. A theist is not actually God. A theist is somebody who believes in God. So an a theist, wouldn't that technically be somebody who is against those of us that believe in God? Little thought there. 
But the, you get these atheists. Oh, that Bible, yeah, I don't know what... There's, there's just so many contradictions in it, and there's all these issues with it, and it doesn't make sense to me, and whatever. I remember this drunken papist that I used to have as a neighbor, and he said, he said, the Bible. I said, have you ever read the Bible, Tom? And he said, uh, he said, oh, he said, man, that book makes me go crazy. He said, I, no, I don't read that book. Oh, it just messes my head up. We just need to read it more, you see. Just read it and read it and read it, and then you'll eventually understand it. No, you won't. No, you won't. It takes a man that's saved, men out there that are saved, to come along and expound the scriptures to you. And sisters, of course, can do it too in the right situation. They can show it to a lost man and say, hey, well, this is what the Bible says. You know, I have a study on that. Can a saved Christian lady, you know, witness to a man? The answer is yes, obviously. It's just the prohibition about, about women, you know, usurping authority over the man and being in silence and things. That's talking about when the saints are gathered together. You know, there's supposed to be a hierarchy of men, male elders, not women. That's all it's talking about. But if you're a saved sister and some guy is out there and he's trying to understand the scriptures, you see him reading and you go up and you could say to him, Understandest thou what thou readest? <laughs> Do you understand that? Well, I can show you some things about that. I can tell you how to be saved. If you want to get straightened out doctrinally, well then, here's a website, kjvm.org. Or somebody else that uses the King James Bible. Let's go to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Go to verse uh, 14 here. Here we're going to see a lot of very important things. Okay, Acts chapter 13, verse 14. We'll see again people reading the scriptures and yet not having an understanding. <clears throat> But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after reading, after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand, beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, um, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Just stop there for a minute. What Paul's doing here is he's just kind of giving a synopsis of what the Old Testament is about. Right? Again, that's fine. If you, I've had people ask that question. Can you just kind of say what passages are about without actually quoting the exact scriptures? You're trying to explain it to somebody. Yes, you can do that. Just kind of give them an idea of what the Bible is about. Verse 23. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus, who when John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. So they're reading every Sabbath day from the scriptures, and yet they are fulfilling the scriptures condemning Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they, Pilate, that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. And God raised him from the dead, um, but, but God raised him from the dead. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witness, witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. 
<clears throat> and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Hmm. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified Paul and Barnabas. No, they glorified the word of the Lord. Hmm. And as many as were ordained to our eternal life believed, and the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. You have people there that are hearing the word of God. They've heard it since the time that they were a child. They're raised hearing the scriptures, and yet they don't even realize that they're fulfilling those scriptures. Have you ever met anybody like that? Somebody says, you know, I remember this one guy said the one time, well, he said, I'm not a saint. You know, I'm no saint. And I thought, yeah, you're exactly right, actually. You know, and I was people were talking. I couldn't get a word in edgewise. A lot of times you'll deal with that with people. They just blah, 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 you know. And I was always taught that you don't interrupt people, you know, so I'm, I'm not someone that talks over others. But uh, I've seen this thing over and over again with people. They will say statements that appear in the scriptures and not even realize they're condemning themselves. Hmm. So, oh, uh, I've read the Bible through. I read the Bible quite a bit. I'm a scripture scholar. I, I work at the, the seminary here and I know the Bible very well and uh, do you realize that uh, what you're doing is not in the scriptures? And in fact, the scriptures condemn who you are. <laughs> well, don't you know who I am? I'm the Reverend Doctor. I've read the Bible more times than you have. I've studied the scriptures. I know manuscript evidence. I know all these other things. I've read, you know, uh, Arthur W. Pink's uh, series of, of volumes of th theology and whatever. I've read uh, Calvin and I've read Luther and I've read all these other guys and things. Who do you think you are? Well, um, you probably have read the Bible more than me, but uh, you lack understanding because that has to come spiritually. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 3. And brethren, you will run into some of the most prideful people. Oh boy. I mean, I've seen people that... Uh, Oh man, they they've just been through the Bible so many times. You know, they they'll go through and and I I just finished my seventieth time going through the Bible. You know, and I've seen these guys and they'll just read and read, 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 read. You know, how many chapters a day or however many pages or something like that. And they get they get it done. It's kind of a ding. They hit the little bell. You know, ding. My pages are done for the day. More than you've done, I'm sure. You know, and you kind of go, oh, well, yeah. You know. Uh, how many times have you read the Bible? I've read the Bible through 428 times in my life. You know. Okay, but do you understand it? If you've read the Bible through so many times, why hasn't it helped you with your sanctification? 
why is it that you're still doing things that are condemned in Scripture? It seems to, these people seem to miss that. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1, down through verse 11. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister, according to the grace the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Um, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, it's a matter of revelation. You can't just read this book and understand it. It, you know, of your own power and whatever else. The Lord has to reveal things to you. And how many times, I mean, I have lost count how many times some of you have written in the comments and you said, I read this passage and I just thought, I don't know what that means. I don't know. And literally the next day or that day or a day or two later or whatever else, I come out with a study explaining that very passage. And I'm just here and doing my work and whatever. And all of a sudden it's a, hey, you probably should do a study on this or something. And there's probably times that it happens before you even read it. But the Lord says, I'm going to have brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, they're going to look at this passage, and I'm going to get Brian to preach on this issue. I'm going to reveal to him what this passage is. You get, you know, you're young in the faith or something, maybe you won't be getting a lot of the revelations right up front or something. It comes later on with sanctification. Please understand that. You get into the Word. And whatever, the Lord will start to reveal these things. But there's also positions of teachers, Bible teachers. That's what the Lord put me into. And, you know, it's, it's a great thing to be into. And I really, you know, love the fact that a lot of you write to me and tell me that, you know, so many things that you've had in your mind, the Lord reveals those things, you know, um, to me, and then I preach on it. If I can say it that way, it's pretty neat. But the Lord will reveal things to you. Let's go back to the Old Testament now, to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Yeah, chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, beginning in verse 6. And reading to verse 9. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. There's the key word meditate. New Agers steal that too and pervert it. Um, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. You know one of the greatest ways to have the Lord with you wherever you go? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Right there. You can have the Lord with you at all times. Fellowship of the Spirit. It's a very amazing thing. But again, you see this thing there. He's meditating on the Word. That's not what you get from reading 10 pages a day. Or 20 pages or 30 pages. or I spend 8 hours every day reading the Bible. Do you meditate on it? First, do you understand it? But secondly, do you meditate on it? Are you out there looking and, and whatever and... Uh, you see somebody say something or something happens out to you when you're at a job or you're out at the store or wherever else and you think, 
That reminds me of that scripture. Wow. And you leave and you say, wow, that's exactly what it was, Lord. Yeah. Um, the wicked shall be filled with their own ways and, and things. Yeah. Um, uh, think, trying to think of the one verse, you know, answer not a fool according to his folly. Well, yeah, that guy was foolish and there was no way to answer the guy. He just kept interrupting me and things. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Wow, you know, you're meditating upon the scriptures, you see. That's the way it's supposed to be, and you're not going to get that if you're... You know. Ding, ding, I got my, my pages done today. Look at me. I'm going to have, you know, I should be done, I should be to the book of Revelation by the end of the month, and then I'll have another... Another little mark. I mean, again, you see, Brian, you're you're blowing this thing way out of proportion. You're just so nasty. You're so mean. You don't smile. You know, <laughs> oh, people. Uh, if you paused every single one of my videos, you could go through and find multiple places where I'm smiling. But the people say I never smile. Some people you can't help them. But um, you know, my whole point is here, brethren. Um, you can read the scriptures and you'll never find one person, never one, man or woman, anyone, that ever said how many times they've read through the scriptures. Not once, ever. Um, you'll see the thing about that they led 3,000 people to the Lord on you know, the day of Pentecost in the books of Acts chapter 2. But again, you're not seeing this thing of, you know, I got so many people saved, I have led people to the Lord. I led 12 this past week and I have read my Bible through three times already this month and I, it's pride. That's what that is. <laughs> I mean, show it to me in the scriptures. I will repent. I will say, hey, I'm sorry. I should be counting how many times I go through the Bible. Um, I don't see it anywhere. So if you don't see it, then you shouldn't be doing it. Psalm 1. Let's go there next. I mean, you, you'll meet these all-star Christians. And oh boy, do they have everything just right and they just can't relate to you because you're, you're just so terrible. You're pond scum compared to them. And I've met a lot of those and they're just as wicked as wicked can be when they get outside of their little church building and the whole thing. So watch out for that. Psalm 1, beginning in verse 1 and reading the whole psalm here down to verse 6. Blessed is, is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You're thinking about it. You're meditating upon a scripture, not 10 chapters that you've read or 20 chapters. How do you meditate on 20 chapters? You know? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You realize how many seminary professors are going to stand before God at the great white throne judgment, before they're cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity? I mean, we read about them in the book of Acts. These doctors and things, that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and everything, well, they knew the scriptures forward and backward. But they didn't understand it. And they didn't meditate on it. Hmm. That's where the problem comes in. Psalm 119. Go there. The biggest psalm in the entire Bible. And if you want to call it a chapter, it would be the biggest chapter in the entire Bible. And you know what it's about? If you newly just got saved, it's about the Word of God. The scriptures. God writes more about the scriptures in here than uh, a lot of other things. Psalm 119, go to verse 145. I cried with my whole heart, Hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, Save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. I prevented the dawning of the morning, and cried, I hoped in thy word. Mine eyes prevent the night watches, that I might meditate in thy word. I'll tell you right now, brethren, you will find that will happen to you at some point in time. You'll be thinking about some scripture and it will keep you from sleeping. You might even wake up in the middle of the night and just 
Does the Bible say that? I thought the Bible, there's a verse that talks about that. I should probably get up and look that up, but I'm going to mess up the rest of my night of sleep and, and things. I thought the Bible said that one thing. I think it does. You know what? I need to get up and you'll go and you'll get up and you read it and you go, wow, it does say that. But that lines up exactly with what I'm going through right now. See, that's meditating upon the scriptures. It's not, well, you know, I remember my 200th time through the Bible. <laughs> you know, that's not there. And I've seen so many people and they'll do this thing where they just have, they'll just go through the Bible over and over again. Fire truck going by there. I don't know what that was all about. But 1 Timothy chapter 4. Go there next. But brethren, you have to watch out for this stuff. I have, I've had so many experiences with people and they just, oh, they know the Bible so well. I remember uh, Stephen Anderson, that incredible nut, um, little devil, came out recently. One of you let me know about this. Stephen Anderson came out and said that uh, um, how that, um, that uh, there's some verse in the Old Testament and it, had a misprint in it. It was it was a copyist error or something, some kind of a problem there. It's not in the Hebrew or whatever else. Yeah, you know, just oh, he shows just Peter or uh, Stephen Anderson there. He's he's just you know so holy that God shows him this error and then he can kind of correct it. So probably come out with his own version of the King James Bible or something then. But uh, Stephen Anderson, this crazy nut. You can watch some of my videos against the guy. He's a crazy. But anyhow. Um, he, I remember him bragging the one time about how he knows, he can quote from memory whole books of the Bible. You know, forget if it was Philippians or Colossians or something like that. Um, and he can just quote it from memory. I can do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Then you look at all the problems the guy had. I actually knew a, a guy that went to a Baptist church I used to attend. And I literally stood up in front of everybody the one time. And he quoted from memory the book of Colossians all the way, all the chapters, went through the whole thing, just up there quoting it and just whatever. And a uh, guy got, uh, went on a mission trip and he went into a, a bar and was watching, you know, fornication happening and things right there in the bar and, and uh, you know, porn addict and all kinds of stuff. But he can quote scripture. He can quote scripture. He knows that Bible. He knows the book. Just doesn't live according to it. That's all. <laughs> Look out. First Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. You can have understanding that this meat is fine that I'm eating because it's sanctified by the word of God and prayer. You prayed before you ate it. Verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nursed up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading. You're supposed to read. That's fine. To exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Meditate, not brag that you've read 30 pages. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Establish yourself in the word so that you're living according to the scriptures. That's what profiting is. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Okay, what, are, what is doctrine? I saw that in the comments. What Could you please do a study on what is doctrine? 
Well, you can look up the verse or what it, the word in a dictionary and get the get definition that way. Webster's 1828 dictionary is what I would recommend. But just to briefly say it, doctrine is what we are told to do. There are things in the scriptures that you are told it's you're commanded. There are certain doctrines that are not optional. All right, you have some things. Paul says, you know, if you want to stay single like me, go ahead. Again, paraphrasing. If you want to get married, good for you. Fine. So there's no doctrine saying forced celibacy or something. That's not doctrine. Paul's saying, I give my own opinion. It's not doctrine. All right. Uh, celebration of holidays. It's up to you. We have liberty. A woman wants to wear a head covering. There's no doctrine saying that you have to. It's up to the individual. But doctrines of the blood atonement. Uh, Jesus Christ shed his blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanseth us from all sin. Uh, that's there. The doctrine of the resurrection, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. All right. There are doctrines like that. Uh, dispensational teaching is a doctrine, a Bible doctrine. You're told, you're commanded to uh, rightly divide the word of truth. All right. Those are doctrines. Those are things that you can't agree to disagree on or whatever else. All right. Well, let's keep going here. Two more places to go to. Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. It says here, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither up under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Well, you can read the book, can't you? Well, if you want to waste your time and you're lost, yeah, go ahead and read the Bible. Read it. Keep reading and reading and reading and reading and reading. You'll never get understanding that way. If you don't apply what's written in this book to your personal life, you're wasting your time. Verse 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. God must reveal the scriptures to you. And if it's not done that way, you can listen to me and you can kind of get some of it and whatever else. But if there's no personal relationship between you and him, you are wasting your time. You're studying the greatest book that's ever been written. A great book of prose, you know, or whatever the educated type of people would say. Indoctrinated, really. But uh, it's a, the greatest work of prose ever. You know, and there's poetry in it and, and things. And it's a beautiful work of English literature. That's all it is to those people. Most people do not take this book seriously. Just like the book says. Finally, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Lord compelled me to do this study because I've seen this thing and it, I kicked this years ago and I and you know I made a bunch of people mad and whatever with it um, and I just want to come through and clarify this again if you haven't seen some of my really old studies but 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 18 through 20 the Bible says I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all languages is what Paul's talking about there Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. I'll just tell you another little thing here. There's times that I'm tired and I'm reading this Bible and I'll get down through it and my mind goes and drifts off onto some other thing and I'll get to the end of the chapter and I think, oh, I was completely drifting. I don't even remember what I read there. I will force myself to go back and read it again. You know why? Because I want to come to this book and have understanding. That's why. You say, well, uh, how many times have you been through the Bible there, Brother Brian? Start to finish? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Honestly, I do not know. Um, there might have been a time when I've gone start to finish, but uh, for the most part, it's just I want to study something. I'll go and I'll do a word search and I'll, I'll look up words and, 
And, you know, a lot of times I'm doing it off-grid, too, so it's not just electronic. You know, sometimes I get the strong concordance out. Stay away from the Greek and the Hebrew. It's not the Greek and the Hebrew to actually underlie the King James Bible, so it'll lead you astray. Um, Hodges and Farstad, they came up with the majority text. It's a blending of Receptus and Nestle's text. So stay away from Strong's Greek. It's corrupt stuff. But, <clears throat> you know, you can use the, the concordance, Strong's concordance, paper-based Strong's concordance. And you say... I wonder what the Bible says about whatever. And you look it up. Um, but, I mean, we go through every night. We read a chapter. The three of us. My son reads now, too. And we go through it. And there's been so many times we'll come to a verse and we'll say, Wow, look at that verse. And we'll go back to it. And after we're done reading, we'll go back to it and say, What was that verse again? Look at that. You have verse 8 right there. Wow. That's exactly what we're going through right now. Isn't that amazing? And we'll talk about it. And the next day we'll get up and we'll say, what did, how, how did it say that again? Let me go get the Bible. And we'll get the Bible. and get Right here, verse 8. Let's read this together again. Meditating upon the Word. Um, I will never, ever get to the point where I'm going to be reading massive portions of the Scripture and just going front to back, front to back, front to back, front to back, and start bragging and telling you people out there, um, <clears throat> I've been through the Bible 653 times. Why aren't you reading the Bible as many? Uh, uh, that's prideful. That's wicked. Um, there's no Scripture for that. Nobody in the Scriptures does that. So um, is it a sin to read the, or is it a, uh, can you read the Bible too much? Say it that way? Yes. Somebody can read the Bible too much. Absolutely you can. You're reading so many pages, somebody come, should come up to you and say, what did you read? Oh, well, brother, I, I don't remember. There, what verse really stood out to you? Are you meditating upon that verse? I had rather see Christians read one or two verses in their Bible and just meditate on it. And just think about it and just say, Lord, that is amazing. Your word says, wow, you know what? I need to write that down. I carry here in the back, my back pocket, this little book. And in the back of this, Psalm 9, verses 19 through 20. Right there it is. Right there. Write out the scriptures. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. And I, I pray that for this nation. I pray that for this world. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. I meditate upon that scripture. Yes, but how many pages have you read? I'll read the scriptures a lot. I spend a lot of time in this book. You can see that by the way it's falling apart and everything. I spent a lot of time in that book, but I'm not about to brag about it. I'm not going to do that. I'll tell you how many times I've gone cover to cover and, oh, look at me. Uh, watch out for people to do that. Very dangerous. Oh, you need to do this. If you do this special reading schedule, it'll get you through the Bible at least once a month or something or once a year. <laughs> Let the Lord direct you. Let the Lord guide you through it. Certainly, go through the Bible. You want to read Genesis and just start going through? There's no sin in that. Go ahead. I'm not condemning it. Okay? But don't start keeping track of it and using it as a little pride thing. It's very dangerous when you do that. Well, that's what the Pharisees of old did. They would brag about their knowledge of the Scriptures. And Paul is saying, you don't even realize it. You're studying the Scriptures every week. You study the Scriptures, and yet you don't even realize it's condemning you. So... Just wanted to put that study together. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Um, meditate upon the Scriptures, brethren. Find your comfort in the Scriptures. So that will be it. And um, have a good week. Uh, stay in the book. And we'll see you in the next study. As always, thank you everybody out there for your support. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for watching.